Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of iCare Today. I'm your host, Dr. Thomas Kisselin, and I'm going to pose a question to everybody today. What if you were diagnosed with an eye condition that actually left you uh, visually impaired and took your sight and you could no longer function and perform your activities of daily living? Where would you turn? What would you do? Uh, it's a very scary situation. Unfortunately, there are patients who have certain conditions that leave them visually impaired. Thankfully, in our community, right here in the Hazleton area, we have one of the finest organizations to help patients with visual impairments. It's the Hazleton Blind Association. I'm happy today to be joined by the President and CEO of the Hazleton Blind Association, Lori Lasant. And we're going to talk today about the association and services that are provided um, to the community and patients in our area and why it's important to have an organization like this right in our community. So Lori, uh, thanks for joining me uh, today on, on Eye Care Today. And um, maybe the first thing you can do for our viewers is just uh, give us a little bit about the history of the Hazleton Blind Association. How long has it been around? Um, and um, what's different maybe now versus years ago? Okay. Uh, the organization started back in 1943, and it was started by a gentleman named Harold Hermans, who was totally blind, and he would go door to door teaching people Braille and helping them with daily living tasks. Uh, so he would do that all by himself. He would walk from place to place to do that. And the difference, I think, between then and now is, of course, you know, we are a greater organization. It was kind of a, a one-man show then. He had a board of directors who helped out, but he was providing service, where today we have myself, a caseworker, a few senior aides that assist us. We have two vans to transport. So services have certainly become greater. The need has become greater than it used to be. And I guess the, the need has become greater, obviously, because our our community, I mean, we live in an older population community, so um, patients are obviously, we're, we're living longer, and some of these conditions we develop, you know, we develop later in life, so we have more of a need for it. But you touched on, on transportation. I know that's one of the services provided, but tell our, our viewers out there really what, what services do you provide? Well, the first thing that we do is when somebody is in need of service, um, we go out to their home and do what we call the intake. So we do all the history to find out what it is that they need. We provide transportation. We're a door-to-door -door service, which means we knock at your door, we pick you up, or we assist you to our van and assist you into the, the medical facility that you're going to. Uh, we don't just say, okay, the building's on the right and you head in. We help you get to point A and point B. Same thing on the return trip home. We also go into the home. We assist with reading mail, writing checks, uh, going to the grocery store, you know, trying to find what's on the shelves. A canned good of a can of soup versus a can of vegetables looks the same to somebody who's visually impaired. So we assist in that manner. Um, organizational skills, uh, things like that, just things that keep you independent in your own home, in your community. So before that point where, where you guys provide these services, how does that patient get here? We have eye doctors who do referrals to us. We have sometimes family members who refer. Uh, we also have blindness and visual services, which is the state agency for blindness. They'll make referrals when they go out to see individuals. And a lot of times people just call themselves. They might find us in the phone book and say, you know, I, I, I need some help. Um, so they're usually the top ways that people find out about us. And when we say visually impaired, I, I, there's a difference, and, and some of our viewers may not know this, between visually impaired and, and blind. Um, what are some of the conditions these patients have that you deal with on a day-to-day on -day basis? Most of our clients have macular degeneration. Um, and then we have folks with glaucoma, retinitis pigmentosis, um, diabetic retinopathy. They're usually the, the things that seem to inflict most of our clients. Yeah, those are the, the four biggies. And, you know, briefly what I, I'd like to do for our viewers is just go through, you know, each one of those because I think it's important for people to understand or if they have a, a loved one or a, re a relative or a friend who has one of those four conditions you just mentioned, you know, this might be an organization that, that could help these patients. You know, as we know, macular degeneration is one of the leading causes of blindness in patients over 55 years old in the United States. And as we know, there's two forms. There's the wet form and the dry form. The wet form means there's bleeding in the eye. The dry form means there's not bleeding. And both can progress at different rates, some very slowly, some much faster. But what we know about macular degeneration, unfortunately, you know, we can 
slow it down a little bit, but there's not really a cure yet. So, you know, when we're dealing with these patients, it can really affect their, their central vision and, you know, with reading and going to the store, like you said, it can, it can really be an issue. Um, diabetic retinopathy, obviously patients with diabetes can have bleeding inside the eye. That can distort the central vision. And retinitis pigmentosa is an interesting condition because we don't hear much about it, but it's one of those conditions that can really start taking our vision in the, you know, the second to third decades of life. Um, patients actually will lose very slowly the peripheral vision vision and they can develop cataracts um, and very slowly uh, become blind to the point where they only have tunnel vision or the very small central portion of their vision so they have trouble with mobility around the house. So I'm sure you see these patients, you go in and you have to help them get around through the house. Um, let's take a retinitis pigmentosa patient. Um, you go into the house, what do you do for that patient? The first thing that we do again is we assess what needs that they do have. Um, and one of the things that we find, we don't have any orientation and mobility instructors that are here at the Blind Association, so that's when we call upon the state, the Bureau of Blindness and Visual Services. And we get them set up with them to have the, the mobility training because of course that is important, to get around their home, to be able to go out in the community. Um, so we do that. We also establish whether or not they need rehabilitative services, and if so, we send in rehab teachers. It might be something as easy as doing what we call high marking, where we'll go in and make a little mark on their oven or on their stove at you know 350 degrees, for example, on the oven. So now that they can tactilely feel it rather than having to see it. Um, again, we'll, we'll provide the transportation to their medical appointments. We'll make sure that we can help organize their kitchen so that they're safely using things and they're easily able to find food in their freezer as well as in their their cabinets because they seem to be the two most difficult things in the in the kitchen um, you know then we also will provide that in-home mail reading service where our caseworker will go in she'll read their mail assist them with the, the check writing the things that we kind of take for granted every day really right the things that we do every day without even without even thinking right. about it now here's the question probably everyone's asking how much does all this cost our services are free um, as a nonprofit organization, we rely on our community. Um, so our community is very gracious and we look for donations from the public. We do many fundraisers, um, and, but there is no cost for our service. It is a free service. That's amazing, folks. Um, zero dollars is what this costs uh, for um, clients to utilize in our area. And we're going to actually talk about funding um, in our last segment. Uh, what I want to do is we're going to take a, a quick break. And in our next segment, we're actually going to talk about visual impairment in children and what the Hazel and Blind Association does um, for your children in, uh, in your community here in the Hazelton area. You're watching Eye Care Today. I'm your host, Dr. Thomas Kiss, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, you're watching Eye Care Today. I'm your host, Dr. Thomas Kisslin. Joining me today on Eye Care Today is Lori Lassand. She's the president and CEO of the Hazelton Blind Association. And what we're talking about today is uh, patients with uh, vision impairment. And if you have a condition uh, that renders you visually impaired, where do you turn? What do you do? Uh, this can be a, a very depressing, debilitating um, situation for uh, patients nowadays. So thankfully we have a, a great community, a great organization right in our community that can help patients. And um, I think what, what might be sadder than any other situation, Lori, is a child um, who's born with not any disability, just any disability, but a vision impairment. Um, how, how, how often is that, that you, that you see that? Truthfully, I would say within our, our service area, we don't see a great amount of it as we do the older adults, but we probably see at least 10 a year. And I know that might sound like not such a, a big number, but we do see probably at least 10 kids a year who mom or dad call and say, you know, I just found out my child has a vision problem. And it's something more severe than just needing a pair of glasses or amblyopia or something like that. Um, so it is out there and we do the best that we can to, to assist and get them what they need. What are, we talked in the last thing about conditions that affect our, our, um, our senior patients. What would be a condition that might affect one of, one of these kids? Probably the biggest thing that we see are brain tumors. Um, that are affecting their vision. Um, you know, I would say out of all the kids that we have at our summer camp, probably about 50% of them we find that um, albinoism, 
is another one that we see a lot of. And those two are probably the two prevalent ones that I see. And a lot of them have a lot of other issues that come with it, not only the vision impairment as well. So. Yeah, we, you know, obviously brain tumors can affect a lot of things, but depending on the part of the brain that that, that tumor is in, if it affects the visual pathway, we have to remember, um, you know, our eyes see because the message goes from our eyes all the way back to the back of the brain called the occipital cortex. So if there's a, a tumor, let's say, that, that is affecting any part of that visual pathway, that patient's going to have a visual impairment. So uh, in a child, um, you know, not only are children dealing with mobility issues, but they're dealing with learning. Um, so these kids are in school, and I'm sure you work closely with um, it, the schools have some, some uh, vision services these kids get, but when they're not in school, um, again, is it the same as with the adults that you help as far as um, mobility issues and Braille and things like that? We do. We Again, we refer um, out to blindness and visual services. You, that's usually our first start. Um, we do, for that we, we will do the orientation mobility, the rehab teaching, and braille instruction if they choose to, to learn braille. Not, unfortunately, not all children choose to learn it. Um, so we do refer for that. And then of course we do some things here where we have our summer camp that we do so that we can provide some hands-on service to them. Explain to our viewers what summer camp is because I know you started that and I think that is a, a fantastic program that you've instituted for the kids in our community. Tell our viewers a little bit about what summer camp is. Okay, well campsite started about six years ago based on the need that, and, and truthfully, I had been nine months pregnant and taking kids back and forth to a camp in Allentown and I decided that this was just crazy to travel this far and the kids needed the service. We needed something here at home. So with that, I decided we needed to do this program and through the Reader's Digest Foundation, they gave me grant money to start this program. The program allows children to be kids, but to learn at the same time. So a lot of our kids, people don't realize that when you're visually impaired, especially in children, they don't have the same cardiac activities that let's say a, a child without a disability may have, um, you know, we provide services so that those kids can grow up and be independent in their, again, in their home, in their community, that they can take care of themselves. Uh, you know, we do all kinds of activities with them. We do an obstacle course. We do things just teaching them how to button a shirt, tie a shoe, make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, things that, you know, sometimes, again, we take for granted that we just, yeah, as kids, we just learn it. And then you also go out in the community with these with these kids, right? We like do. To, you take field trips places. Tell our viewers a little bit about where, where these kids go. Um, well, one of the places that the kids enjoyed probably the most was the Mountain Valley um, Karate. They had a great time. They learned a little bit of self-defense. They did go-karts. They've done paddle boats. They did a rock climb wall at the YMCA, which totally amazed me <laughs> because I wouldn't be brave enough to get up there and climb and here were some kids that were totally blind doing it. But these are kids. They and are kids. Kids will be kids. Kids right? will be kids. No fear. That's right. And we, we have kids from ages 7 to 21. And it's a wide range but we tailor each age group to what we're going to do with the children. And let me guess, uh, it doesn't cost anything. It's free. It's free. <laughs> it's free to the kids. Um, so. Let's, um, let's talk a little bit about, let's say, funding for the camp. Where does the money come from for the camp? Every year for the last six years, I've been very fortunate that I've been able to receive a grant uh, in order to, to do camp. Um, Reader's Digest was, was wonderful and helped us out. Junior Leadership right here in Hazleton gave us money for this year's camp to help. Uh, the Colleen Shea Foundation has been phenomenal. Um, last year gave us a, a very generous sum of money to do camp and again this year gave us a little bit of money to again help with that. Um, and private donations. We look for not only a monetary gift but Damon's restaurant last year hosted us one day for lunch. That was a huge expense that we didn't have to deal with, was providing lunch for 20 kids. So any kind of donation like that is what we're looking for. So if there's businesses out there in the community, let's say either restaurants or places that have something interesting to offer, they can contact you and could the kids even do field trips to a business and see how things run. I know, didn't they go to McDonald's they once did, and, see, yes. and see how, um, so these are things that uh, the kids can learn about and, and find out and I, I guess just add another dimension to, you know, what, what's going on in their lives. Absolutely. We will go anywhere. Kids love to learn 
and wherever anybody invites us, we're there to find out what's going on. So what we're seeing, folks, is right here in our community, we have an organization that really helps um, not just our senior patients who may have uh, visual impairment, but our kids. If uh, any of our children have vision impairments, this organization is, is here to help. Um, we're going to take another quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about funding, exactly how the Hazel and Blind Association um, can provide all these services uh, to our community. You're watching Eye Care Today. I'm your host, Dr. Thomas Kissel, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, you're watching Eye Care Today. I'm your host, Dr. Thomas Kissel, and once again, um, I'm happy to be joined by Lori Lassan. She's the president and CEO of the Hazelton Blind Association. In our last two segments, we were talking about um, what services uh, that the organization uh, provides to our community here. And what I want to do in our, in our last segment is, again, uh, Lori, I'd like you to just, again, touch on, um, again, services, the, uh, some of the other services that are provided, and, again, um, what communities uh, you actually reach. I know the Hazelton community is one, but tell me, uh, again, how far, how far out do your arms stretch? They stretch very far these days. <laughs> um, we serve all of southern Luzerne County, all of Carbon County, and all of Schuylkill County. Wow. So we do serve quite a large area with the amount of staff that we have. Um, you know, we provide not only the services that we talked about earlier where we're going in homes to people who have a vision problem, we're also in our community talking to groups and to schools about how to keep their eyes safe. Uh, we do elementary schools where we do our Seawell Bunny program and our Treasure in Sight program. Uh, one of our clients, actually Joe Boguist, who's totally blind, comes with us on our Treasure in Sight program and talks about what it's like to be blind. Uh, we also do vision screenings with children ages 3 to 5 where we go into a preschool or a daycare and we actually screen the kids to see how well do they see because at that age they don't know how well they're supposed right. to see. And then of course if there's a problem we make that referral then to an eye doctor. And we also do senior centers, we do glaucoma screenings and presentations and we do our industries, we also do a, a glaucoma screening for them as well. So. And you also provide low-cost eyeglasses, right, for patients who can't afford glasses. Correct. You help out um, with that. And also we see some of the um, um, devices behind us here, uh, large print books, books on tape, clocks, uh, things like that, correct? Correct, yes. We have what we call our talking book program that we could supply the individual with a machine. We have a small library here at the office and we also utilize the library for Philadelphia, uh, in Philadelphia for the um, blind and, and visually impaired. So what we can see um, is that there's all these services, all these great things that this organization is providing and you know you said to me a couple times you know these are free to uh, people in the community and I guess funding has always been uh, a problem for nonprofit organizations. I know the, the state um, has helped out in the past, but all we know that state funding has, has gone down. So um, has that been probably one of the biggest problems for the organization is, is getting funds to help support everything you're doing for the community? Absolutely, because every year funds get cut just because there's a shortage of funds. And we still continue to see people in need. So we took a cut from our money um, from the state comes through the Office of Vocational Rehabilitation. So we received a, a cut there. We're also a United Way agency. United Way doesn't make all. Agencies begin, you know, begin to get cut. The economy is poor, so donations go down. Uh, you know, we do a direct mail appeal where you know, people, people have to prioritize and sometimes, although the charity is important to them, they just can't afford to do it anymore. So then, of course, that hits directly here. Also, if anyone would like to make a donation to the Hazelton Blind Association, we're going to put the uh, phone number, the mailing address uh, up on the screen uh, for you at home, and you can, you can look at that. And obviously, I'm sure the organization would love to take any donation that anyone, anyone could see fit. Um, in wrapping up here, Lori, I know we touched on a lot. Is there anything else maybe you'd want to add that, that maybe I missed um, as far as um, what else you do for the community? Well, I think we touched on pretty much everything that we do. The one thing I do want to say, though, one of the big misconceptions here at our organization is that you have to be blind to utilize our service. You know, we, we've talked about being visually impaired. It doesn't mean that you have to not see anything to utilize us. That's an excellent point. So if there's one thing I can ask people to take away is to keep that in mind, that if you have any kind of vision problem at all, 
or you're not even sure, just give us a call so that we can see. I'm sure there's something that we can do to help. Great. Um, folks, um, you know, we, we learned a lot today about uh, a great organization right here in our community um, that's been serving uh, the Hazelon area for um, over 50 years. Um, so if you have any questions, um, again, we're going to have the phone number up on the screen. Please feel free to give the Hazel and Blind Association a call. Uh, you've been watching Eye Care today. If you have any questions, please feel free to give Lori a call at the Blind Association or give our office a call, Hazelton Eye Specialist. The phone number is 453-2020. Uh, uh, thanks for spending uh, 30 minutes with it. I'm, I'm your host, Dr. Uh, Thomas Kisslin. Have a great day.